Next uh, on agenda is F and A Benefits Administration contract with Express Scripts. Laura, you know the drill. Yes, sir. Um, my name is Laurie Lee. I'm Executive Director of Benefits Administration. And to my right is Krista Martin, who's our Director of Finance. We have 10 contracts before you today. Uh, seven are extensions. Four uh, are, will have a reduction in the maximum liability. And let the record reflect that all were submitted on time. So I'm pleased to say that as well. Um, the Express Scripts, I'll just start in with that one, yes, if that's all right. Um, Express Scripts, Inc. provides administrative services for the state's pharmacy assistance program known as Cover RX. The current contract runs through December 31st, 2011, um, so that's already in place. Uh, this con this uh, amendment increases the maximum liability for the contract from $37 million to $43 million uh, to reflect the growth in the program, and this is also consistent with the fiscal 11 appropriation for that program. Um, this is largely to cover uh, additional drug costs. Uh, occasionally, um, uh, the um, review committee uh, for the formulary makes some suggestions for additions to, to, um, to the formulary, but most of the drug costs are resulting from increased enrollment. Um, and specifically, the enrollment continues to increase for the mental health safety net population that this also serves. Um, there are a couple of other changes in this amendment. Um, particularly around um, how we pay for the uh, influenza and pneumonia vaccinations. Uh, it, it's really just a, a change in how uh, Express Grips pays the pharmacies, which is a bundled payment. And then, um, as I mentioned, we're adding three generic drugs to the formulary. Um, this is a very efficient program. It's largely a generic formulary with the exception of diabetes medications um, and uh, uh, such uh, insulin and then diabetic supplies. Uh, which are brands. Otherwise, it's all generic. It's been a very um, effective program. We're serving about 45,000 people under Cover RX right now. You finished? Yes, sir. Okay, Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Call the roll now. Representative Brooks, Representative Fitzhugh, Senator Kelsey, Representative McManus, Representative Shipley, Senator Tate, Representative Todd, Senator Yeager, Vice Chairman Curtis, Aye. Chairman Ketron. Ten ayes. Motion carries. You recognize on the next contract. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the next seven are contract extensions. Five of them are also dealing with the Cover Tennessee programs. So I'll start with the with the first one, which now is Cover Kids. If, if, if some of these, are, if you can block them, if they're identically the same thing you're dealing with, we'll do them as a block. There, there are two. The Cover TN amendments are exactly alike. Um, this one is different from okay, those. We'll just remind me when we get to those. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield to Tennessee for the Cover Kids uh, Amendment. Blue Cross Blue Shield provides a fully insured product, product for the Cover Kids program. Uh, this does extend the contract term through December 31st, 2011, and that's the final extension on this contract. Um, it does revise um, some, some premium levels, um, and this is basically to reflect the cost increases in the program, largely around the bundled payment for maternity, which is part of the Healthy Tea and Babies portion of the program. Um, there are some other changes that allow us to combine the medical and prescription drug claims for children enrolled under this program and also under the alternative um, uh, delivery network, which you all approved at the last fiscal review meeting. And this is to allow our decision support contractor to combine the claims for analysis purposes. Um, uh, in addition, there are, um, uh, there's a minor change which will allow the Cover Kids customer satisfaction survey to comply with the NCQA um, standard uh, uh, customer satisfaction survey. Uh, and NCQA is the National Committee for Quality Assurance. 
Um, so this just permits some standardized reporting of, of uh, customer, customer satisfaction. Um, that's largely the changes that are in this uh, amendment and the extension. There is an increase in the maximum liability um, for, for this contract because of the continued growth in the program. Chairman Catherine, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, why do we, you just answered why we need it. Can you go a little deeper than that? We still have $202 million left in the, in the maximum liability. Why do we need another $12 million? For another year. But that, uh, excuse me, that includes. Um, we were just, I was just checking the, the, um, uh, proposed enrollment increases that we are expecting to see is largely due, as I mentioned, to the maternity cases. Those are a fixed fee, uh, um, a bundled payment for maternity. So we're seeing a, um, a large increase just in the number of those cases, but also uh, the per case cost um, is significantly higher as well. So that combination is driving the increase in enrollment and, and therefore the increase in cost. Where did we get those numbers? I, I had seen a report just within the last two weeks that teen pregnancy was down and de declining. Uh, my name is Krista Martin. What we're seeing recently um, is about 600 new pregnant women coming into our program per month on average. Some months have averaged 900. Um, what we're, and, and that is an increase from last year of around 450 per month, per month. So what we're seeing is a lot more pregnant women, women coming into our program. We're also, um, the rates increased by $1,000 per pregnancy. And let me clarify, there, there are two, pregnant, um, pregnancies are in two different portions of the program. The cover kids, which is the um, teens, pregnancies, we're not, that's not where we're seeing the increase. Where we're seeing the increase is in the pregnant women who are also eligible for the Healthy TN Babies Program. So both, um, both populations are served by the Cover Kids Program, but, but to your point, the, the um, explosive growth in the pregnancies is not in the kids or the, or the teens, it's in the pregnant women. The the four hundred the four hundred and eighty million four hundred thousand that we're looking at here for the figure, is that an annualized cost? That's what it's gonna cost for one year? Or is that what it's cost cumulatively up to this point? That's the t that's this, Chris. That's the, the total um, total expenditures um, over the life of the contract. And how well, what year are we in right now? This, this, will, this amendment will be the fifth and final year of this contract. Well the reason I asked the question is is if we've got $202 million that have not been encumbered, that's maximum liability that we've not got. We're that, that far away from reaching a maximum liability. You're talking about a 50% increase in enrollment for the last four years in one year for us to need more money. That's the reason I asked the question. Well, this contract actually Trust me, we don't want to run you short. But Because what we're, we're talking about is the maximum that can be spent on this contract. And if we've only, okay. if we've, uh, in four years, we've only spent 468 million, 400,000. Are we like 200 and something thousand getting to that point? There's really not much need. It'd take a, it'd take a tremendous increase to uh, ever touch that. Right, this goes, uh, this contract extension should go through um, through December of 2011, which would be um, a whole year plus a couple of months. So it will actually be a little bit more than a year from today. And at the time that this was calculated, this was calculated in September of 2010 for the committee. Uh, one so thing I want to make sure everybody understands on the committee, you know, because the maximum liability is there, they're, they're stuck with whatever we appropriate in the budget. In other words, whatever Senator McNally and Chairman Fitzhugh's committees put out, that's all they can spend. But 
it really it's never made sense, and I'm not picking on y'all. I'm just making a comment to the committee is to have a maximum liability much greater than what we're ever going to spend. Uh, as things tighten up, and, and we're in about as tight of times as I hope I ever see for the rest of my life, but as we each year we're tightening the budget up just a little bit more, we're tightening a little bit more, and I think this is one area that we need to pay attention to. One thing I'd like to say is, is past, um, past expenditures may not be a good predictor of future because the pregnancy rate at one time was, was around $8,000 per pregnancy. It's now over 10000 uh -huh. And at that time, our pregnancies were running about 200 per month. We're now looking at about 600 per month. So what you're seeing is a lot more pregnancies and, and over $2,000 more per pregnancy. So past expenditures may not be a good predictor of future costs. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Chairman Todd. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in looking at the, uh, the pregnancy rate going up and up, do we have any stats if, it, if it's urban rural or, or uh, the age breakdown of, of, on these individuals? You said it wasn't really the teenagers anymore, so I guess it's adults. Uh, yes, sir. These are, these the the growth is in the adult um, population, and um, I believe it's fairly spread out across the state. Um, so I I don't know of any noticeable pattern urban uh, urban rural. Okay. I just ask that a lot more men in the urban areas apparently. <laughs> so and, and women also on the the amendment to add uh, the shelf for cost sharing for the American Indians and, and Native uh, Alaska Natives in there also. Uh, do we have any criteria of uh, a bloodline of how they, you know, how do you ascertain if they're American Indian or not? Because we don't, we're not recognized, Tennessee's not recognized at all by the feds for any uh, tribes in, in, in the state. Right, that's, um, uh, that is negligible um, in, in our population. That is a federal requirement to have the different cost sharing. And, and as you noted, that is, that is an, um, I can't even tell you if it, it even comes up to a, a percentage point, negligible in our population. Um, to your specific question, that is through self-attestation on the application. Um, members who are applying would not necessarily know that there's a difference um, in the cost sharing. So you could just fill out the app, say I'm an American Indian, and y'all go approve them. Uh, Alaska Native. Uh, yes, sir. That is through self-attestation, and again, that that is part of the federal uh, requirement for the um, for the application. That's what's wrong with the federal government now. Not that I'm picking on these two individual, these two uh, classes of folks. Is that same thing we got with illegal immigration? You don't check that either, and, and the, you know, Tehami are on our system right now getting benefits that should be getting benefits, period. Maybe that's something we need to look at on the state level to require that they show some sort of proof of their uh, heritage or, you know, immigration status or something before we go into that. So just wanted to bring that attention to the committee. Chairman Ketcher, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, members, the department, as you've seen us do in the past, they have the ability or the right to come back um, and ask for another appropriation as we get further into it. Uh, I would I would move that we approve uh, this contract without the uh, $12 million increase in the maximum liability, and, and if they need it, they can come back to us in uh, six months or so. You recognize Chairman Todd. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can I amend that amendment to also uh, for them to get us something from the feds or other areas regarding uh, what kind of criteria that we're using except just checking it on a block? I, I, I just I uh, just don't seem right. Let, I mean, let me correct. Uh, I, I misspoke on that. And Stephanie Dickerson, who's the assistant director for the program, just corrected me in my ear. So if you would um, explain for the record what is required, and I apologize for that. Okay, thank you. Yes, um, it is require every applicant that document that they are an Alaskan, American Indian, Alaskan Native must provide the federal um, document papers in order for us to classify them in that category. Well, we don't require for if they're here illegally, correct? 
If they are here illegally, they must provide documents. They have um, to provide with documents. children. Children are not in Rhode Island. children. Yes. But if they're here, and they're here, y'all require them to show proof that they're here legally. That is correct. What they have to bring in their form. They have to provide us with their immigration documents. Okay, uh, years uh, about four years ago, five years ago, I had a bill up here that dealt with this particular subject matter. Uh, dealing with tent care, and I was told at that time they didn't have to provide anything that y'all were going to check anything with regards to that because the federal government said you didn't. And I still got the bill in my office up there, and that was what, you know, and we got the same governor. And, and uh, I'm just interested now that this has all been changed, and I'd like to see those documents if I could, please, ma'am. Which category are you referring to? Illegal immigration. Where okay. You have to show proof in your in our system that you're here legally before you can get assistance. Okay. Are you referring to the children or are you not the children? To I'm talking about the adults. Okay. Are here illegal. If they're here legal or not legal, what documentation do they have to provide to the state? Okay. For cover kids, cover kids do not provide pregnant women coverage. We provide unborn coverage. According to the federal government, we cannot um ask for immigration documents or verify that information because we're providing coverage to the unborn. The unborn child will be classified as U.S. citizen. I understand the unborn child. I understand that provision. I'm talking about others, adults. These are pregnant women. Uh, yes, sir. But Technically, uh, under the guidance that was provided to, uh, to states under the previous administration, there's a, a, a technical guidance letter that states that for covering um, the unborn child, we, we, are not, um, we are not permitted to, to determine citizenship because the child, once born, is a, is a U.S. citizen. You know, we can go out there like rats and multiply them, I guess. Uh, do you amend, you're, uh, you're making a motion to amend the original motion, is that correct? Have I got a second to that? Any, any discussion? We're going to vote on the amendment. I'm going to voice vote on this amendment. I'm going to try it that way. All in favor of the amendment, say aye. aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Now we're back on the bill, on the contract as amended. The motion as amended. Call the roll, Madam Clerk. Representative Brooks. Aye. Senator Kelsey. Representative McManus. Senator McNally. Representative Shipley, Senator Tate, Representative Todd, Senator Yeager, Vice Chairman Curtis, aye. Chairman Catron, ten ayes. Okay, you're recognized on the next contract. All right, that motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.